hey welcome back to the channel and as many of you know if you've followed me this uh, last year I've sold a lot of my stuff I've decimated my fleet of synth samplers effects etc so today I'm going to show you what I've kept and why so uh, this will be my studio tour 2023 coming up I've always preferred to have a uh, piano or a master keyboard with weighted piano keys when I compose and make my music. And the Yamaha KX88 from the mid-80s, a classic iconic master keyboard, well, that's what I've decided to keep. Uh, I just like this so much, it looks so good and uh, I love it. Below that, I now have shelves where I keep my reading material or some of it old keyboard magazines and uh, brochures, ads, etc. I find a lot of inspiration and creativity going through these old ads and brochures and uh, magazines, and especially old keyboard magazines. Uh, from the time before gear worship became a main thing, where the focus was more on the player and techniques used and uh, how they composed, etc. That's really what I like to read about the most these days. And I might do more of these um, what was in it videos on this. But of course, I also need some gear and the Juno 106. I've decided to keep that. <laughs> decided to keep on the Juno 106 because its tactile experience and looks has yet to be beaten in any emulation form. The Yamaha QX1 and QX3 sequencers I've kept and you can see the Alesis HR16 drum machine, the Atari 1040 ST which I still use occasionally and some pedals and a controller and the Yamaha FB01. I've also decided to keep on the 6-track because that has not been emulated in any form yet. And I have more Yamaha QX sequencers, the QX7 and the QX21, and the QX5 I've all kept. On top of the QX5 is the Kawai K1, which has a really nice lo-fi texture, which occasionally comes into play in my music, so I've kept that. And of course the Yamaha DMP7 digital mixer from 1987 with its inbuilt symphonic chorus and hall reverb, a secret weapon when I record a lot of my synths. I have some boxes from MIDI solutions, a lot of really useful MIDI processors etc, which I uh, use for all kinds of things. And here's another old sequencer, the Kawai Q80EX, which belongs to Anders Jensen, but I've had it for years now. I've not done any dedicated video about it, but maybe I will someday. I like it a lot. And below that, to the right, we have the old Mac CR1202 mixer, which I've made a video about. It's been totally abused over the years. And in that uh, suitcase there, I have all my uh, live gear in terms of cables and adapters, etc. So no need to open that. And on top of this rack, I have my Roland MSQ700 sequencer, which I really love, very quirky and a lot of fun to use occasionally. And we have my refurbished Prophet VS, which is up for sale, by the way, for the right price. But for now, I've uh, kept it. <laughs> is 
a dream synth, but it's been emulated very well by Arturia lately, so I'm not sure I'm going to keep this forever. And below that, we have lots of things. We have the MEX8000 memory expander for old Korg synths, like the DW8000, etc. And we have the Korg SQD1 sequencer, which is, well, it's a cult classic. And they have the Aturia Micro Freak, which has really impressed me lately, so I've kept that. The Roland uh, TR-808 needs no introduction. This is not mine, but I've had it for a couple of years now, and since I have it, I use it a lot. Love it. And here we have the RK-008 from RetroKits, a um, sort of remake of the Elysis MMT-8 sequencer, which I've sold since I got this one. And although this is a... Uh, calculator styled uh, sequencer. It has a lot of the MMT8 functionality and buttons, etc. And this is very handy. So uh, this is staying right here. I have a uh, cassette Porta Studio, the Tascam 424, which I use a lot to um, add some tape hiss and tape saturation into some of my tracks. And we have a Behringer BCR2000 MIDI controller, SysX controller, and I use this mainly these days to control the Prophet VS you saw above it. Here's the Yamaha QX5 FD, the floppy drive version of the QX5, and there should also be a Roland MC500 sequencer in there, which I've loaned out at the moment. And at the bottom here, we have my Steinberg Houston MIDI controller for Nuendo and Cubase. And I don't use this much these days, so this will also go out for sale pretty soon. So that's two of my walls now with gear. Uh, I really like how these shelves has made it possible for me to organize the gear in a more suitable way, and I really like it. Okay, moving on. I've uh, kept my Prophet X, of course. I use this live and not so much for studio work. I like it a lot and I have no intention of letting this go. This is a perfect synth and sampler playback engine for me. The Roland TR-8S drum machine has now replaced my Isla S2400 as my main drum machine in the studio. And this actually sits on top of a Alesis uh, sample pad pro which you can see uh, below there and since i only use this live in the studio this is just a um, stand for the tr8s and you can see my skylark fender strat clone back there and this is where i sit and produce and you see a ssl6 mixer you have the steinberg cc121 controller you have a mac here with uh, my plugin synths which i record as any hardware synth and I'm using my old PC from 2011 running Windows 7 with Nuendo 4 or Cubase 5 sequencers, the Audient ID22 audio interface as well. I also use this Personus 1602 Studio Live mixer. I have synths going through there and samplers, etc. And I also use this live if I'm doing any live gigs. My two big 19-inch racks are gone, but I have the Roland SRV2000 Reverb, the Yamaha TX802, the Roland D550, and the Kawai K3M module in a smaller rack now. These I intend to keep. And the outputs from these comes up on my patch base here, which also interfaces with the SSL6 mixer and some other outboard. I have my Motu MIDI interface and the SDD2000 delay sampler from Korg here. And these are the rack samplers I've decided to keep, the Roland S330, the Korg DSM-1 with its um, 16 individual outputs. And these samplers, they are hooked up to this um, Audient ASP800 preamp, which also includes the Akai S1000 and the S900, which I've also kept. The Audient ASP800 preamp is piped optically with ADAT over to the ID22 converter, which runs into my DAW. This monitor doubles up as a monitor for the S330 sampler and uh, for the MacBook. Since the owner of the Roland Jupiter 8 is not keen on getting it back, I'm using it as much as I can for various purposes. This is, of course, a really nice synth and uh, totally not worth the money, but it sounds so good. I also have a couple of synths in storage which are brought into the main studio room when I need them. 
and those include the Roland uh, Alpha Juno 2, which I also use live, the Roland S10 sampler, the Roland W30, the Yamaha DX7S, and the Korg DW8000, which is in this um, soft gig bag here. The emulator 2 is in need of some repairs, so it's just standing here for the moment. Well, that was my studio tour late 2023. I'll follow up this video with a live Q&A session pretty soon. Uh, if you have comments or questions now, please leave them in the comment section and I might address them in that live stream, so um, look out for that. As always, I'm Espencroft. Thank you for watching. Cheers!